What's been your hardest year in filmmaking and why? You're going to make me cry. No. <laughs> oh, no. I'm um, sorry. So, I don't know. I'll start the story. And if this is like too much for, con like if it's too much for TV, like just let me know. Okay. But I um, lost a pregnancy oh, during really? pre-production. Oh no. So of what Death Leaves Behind. And it was the hardest loss, even though I've lost people. I didn't realize how bad that was. I didn't even, you hear about people that have miscarriage and such. And mine, mine happened while I was, I, was, I, I was put under. Like I was not conscious for it. It wasn't my decision. It was, it was one of those things, it was very traumatic. But um, during pre-production, I was on set, like, you know, when I shouldn't have been right after that. But um, yeah, it was, that was so hard, but I put it away because I had a job to do. We were about to go into production, time to get moving. And I did, I went and moved. And we had, um, we filmed the dream sequences in What Death Leaves Behind separate from the film. And they're like their own little movie because it's different. It looks different. It's weird. It's a dream. It, we shot it in the Sun Center Studios um, in, in Aston, Pennsylvania. And it's very eerie and weird. So we shot them as their own movie. So we like went really hard into it. And this was like a year, like 2016 or something. And um, we shot it. And right after that, I had like a little break from the crazy. And I'm talking about like I went down like it was like all the pain or emotion that I was suppressing kind of just came out and I wasn't used to that level of pain because oh that type of pain because I don't suppress things people stuff comes up I deal with it but that was different it was like a whole nother heartstring that was pulled so that was really tough and then getting back into production that's where some things had happened with one person kind of destroying some of the the, the synergy or whatever you want to call it, the, the culture, the, the caring nature of the set was kind of disturbed by a person and I had to fire them at, during that time. Um, there was a producer that was kind of helping us on some business ends that kind of uh, did some shady things. I had to get rid of them. It was like all these things that were really hard to deal with for anyone, but I was in a really bad space. Like, and I don't mean bad, like I was depressed, but it was like it, my heart was like burst open. Like it was very much an open wound and I knew it and I communicated to my inner circle in the, in the group, like, you know, like the director knew at that point, they didn't know when it happened. They knew when I had to go back to the hospital because I had some complications from the surgery during production. I was like in the hospital on my computer and they're like, man, put the computer down. Like it was like crazy time. And then in the same time, I got to fire someone that was really important to the production. And I had to get rid of a relationship that would have made distribution easy because he was shady. <laughs> like stuff like that happened during that time. So I think that year of pre-production was not, even though that was the moment, that, wasn't, that year wasn't the hardest. It was why, why we were in that lull and then coming back into production and finishing the project. It was so hard because it was really, it's just the hardest thing to do. To finish a film, a feature film, film is the hardest thing to do on, in our industry, right? But then to be dealing with some of the hardest things I dealt with in life, on the, the side of my husband and I losing a child. Like that was really hard. And then like other things that pop up, you know, these, you know, um, draining situations that have nothing to do with the, the movie, but it has to do with the people making the movie. And then things like being um, aware of, and I, and I say shady, I mean like, they were doing some bad business and I had to distance myself from that. Um, so all these little things, yeah, that, that made it the hardest year. Um, and I think we all grew from it, myself included, like where we would deal with, we were dealing with a lot. I mean, there were deaths in, we had someone in our production die right after someone that's in the movie. So it's hard for me to watch the film because he passed away. And we had um, a member of the crew, their grandmother died. We had, um, my AD had to drop out during production during the same time because she, she had a, a, a family um, death and different little things like that. They have nothing to do with the film. But those things that come up, it's like, are we going to lose because of something that's not the loss? Like, we're gonna make the film, right? Like, we're gonna keep going. So we just had to, it was a moment of huge perseverance. I'll say that. And it was big perseverance, like big hurdles to get over. And it was like, one of those things where like, you know, you get over a hurdle and you're like, ah. It was never that. It was like, all right, another one, another one, another one, while still having a very personal, like emotional wound. So that was, that was hard. And overcoming that, though, lets me know on this little film, the things that we went through and growing leaps and bounds and getting through it and now having a theatrical release and, you know, all the things that you just can hope for. We, we achieved that with all of this. 
Hopefully all that won't happen on the next one, right? But also we know we can handle it. So when things happen, which they will, when things pop up or uh, things happen to us, we've already proven we can overcome things that are really difficult and, and not in like, you know, you go through something, it's hard, and you go to something else and you're like, whoa, that was nothing. No, I know this was something, what we dealt with. So if we can overcome that, we can keep going. If I can keep going, if I can remain in a place of, I can still encourage someone that day when I just cried all night in my two hours that I could have got some sleep, I can get through anything, anything. So there's no project that I can't confidently say to an investor, I'm going to make this film and I'm going to get this outcome. Because if I said that on this one and we got the outcome, I could do that on anything. And that's, a, a, that's another level of confidence that doesn't happen without adversity. So if you achieve something in a moment of darkness, how much easier is the light? How much easier is sunrise? Like just, you know, we've, got, we've gotten through it. So we could do it again, we could do it again, we could do it again. So in those moments of weakness or in those moments where things are going bad, I know that I'm not gonna crumble because in the time where I should have, in the moments I had the most crumbling moments, I brought it back together and we kept going. And that had a lot to do with the people I was working with the team that was created and why that team worked and why they were able to like latch on and like lock arms with me and move forward when we just lost somebody we cared about. You know, like th those things is something that can't be diminished in any sense of the word. That's why certain people from What Death Leaves Behind that are also in my company now, like the audacity and it's our company. It's not like my thing and I'm just putting you in little pieces, like it's ours because we went to war together. So now we can go ahead and make these videos and we, can, we, we do all these little projects for people outside of just a ma major film. We have two, two shows going on right now that were one in pre-production, one in production. and All these things that we're doing, I just feel so confident in a room with these people because I saw them in bad moments. And that's a luxury because usually you hire these people, you have an idea of what they'll do and you try to be prudent, but then you get into something you're like, oh, they couldn't handle the pressure. I know these people can. They've been pressurized and they've been pressure tested. And these, the, these guys aren't going anywhere. So I, I think that that's something that was very important for me. A lot of people we lost, and I don't mean on the death side, I mean like people that just didn't, didn't work. They couldn't handle the pressure. Even though we finished the film with them, I know not, you're not who I want to go to war with. So I scaled down the, the, the inner circle, but that circle is so solid. And I know we can achieve anything um, going forward. And I know I can, I can answer any promise, any thing put in front of me by somebody with the money, the investor or a network or whatever, because we, we can overcome. We can overcome anything. What about the best year you've mm. had? Best year. Right now, right now is the best year. It's still going. Um, and it's not just because so many things are happening. It's kind of like you do something and you gotta keep telling yourself, it's gonna work, it's gonna work. And then you get to that moment where it just it's working. You don't have to tell yourself anymore. And that's actually hard sometimes too, because it's like, You've developed this place for so long where you're like, ah, come on, it's gonna work. You're gonna be all right. Keep going, keep going. And then it's working. And like even Chad, uh, my executive producer, had to remind me like, this is great. And I'm like, come on, just, everybody settle down. Like, you know, but it's like, you get to kind of enjoy it too. I'm still very much in like, you know, a fixer mode always, but it's, it's one of those things where you can actually say it, it worked, something worked, not it's going to work, it worked. And then go into the next thing knowing you made something work. So this is this right now is the best year so far. Yeah. So coming off of what was the worst year, now going into what seems like the best year. Yeah, for sure. For sure. And that that contrast to be the same person in both is yeah, we got a theatrical run. Yes, we're going to be on the platforms that I promised our executive producer. Yes, he's going to make his return and all those things that you as a producer like oh, I got to do this. But the win for me was remaining who I am in those adversities. And regardless of anything that happened, for me first, because I look at myself first, to remain who I am, and then watch the people that I believed in do the same, we won. Like, there's nothing that can tell me we lost, because that happened. And even before we got our distribution, and before we, like, things were finalized, we just, it was a sense of we won, because we finished when it was really bleak at one moment, you know? So it's like, we, we did it, we did that. So any other achievement is like, wow, this is the icing of the cake. But we've already made the cake and guys, it tastes good and we can do it again and again and again because we have the ingredients. And as long as we hold fast to those ingredients, I think another thing that I'm really mindful of right now is we won, we built the cake or made the cake and all those analogies, but 
we can't forget why it worked. We can't start to believe like, I'm great. No, no, no. It worked because you did great things. So continue to do the great things because I think that's where hubris can creep in and we can start thinking like, man, I'm good. And yes, we should think that. We should be like, yes, we're good, we like it. But also like, I did good is so much more powerful than I am good. It's so much more, because we're people, we're not perfect, so I am good is a, a wavering thing. Because then you do something bad and you're like, oh, I'm bad. No, you're not. You did good. So even when you lose, if you did good, sometimes you win, sometimes you learn, learn from it. And I'm stealing that from John Maxwell, it's a great book. Definitely a, a, one of those books that I recommend, but you don't have to lose. You can, as long as you're doing good. So if you're keeping certain things is what you're doing, know that that's gonna work eventually, Be, have that perseverance. But you can't go into something and do bad practices and win and then think, I'm good, I'm bad. I'm the, you're going back and forth between, no, forget I am. Just st stick to I do. And I do this, I do that, I do that, I do that. And that's what I can say, we did that. We did this and it won. We did that and it made a good project. We did that and we are able to achieve the, the goals that we set forth. And that was what we could do with the smallest amount of money, the least amount of resources, the smallest team. So imagine what happens when we're given the next level and which is what we're doing right now. So I, I'm excited about this greatest year. And um, I think the, the worst year has a lot to do with it though, because it wouldn't even feel as good if we, didn't, if we didn't win in that way. You said with the worst year, you still remained who you are. Can you explain what that means? Yeah, um, I think I had, I, I, I mentioned this <laughs> to my team a lot. Um, so to say that I had the worst year and remain who I was, best year remain who I was, I tell my team, they, the close ones saw me in an ugly moment, right? I cried in front of them. This is like, Rachel, this is not emotional, right? <laughs> I cried in front of them and I um, mistook something from one of the, like I said, the inner, inner circle. And I had an ugly moment. And everybody was like, oh, is she okay? Like, it wasn't like, how dare she? I had an ugly moment of like, not cursing anybody, just crying. I cried. I, I had a very weak moment within this time of the craziness. And um, I told them though, I, I cried in things because I had to tell them what I was feeling and I told them. And then we talked about it and it was over. So I remained myself in a place of, I could have got ugly in that moment because it seemed like certain things were happening or maybe I was feeling insecure because of what I went, just went through or just, I was off, right? Like I was experiencing things I wasn't used to, like feeling like less of a woman because I didn't carry a child to, to term or those things that you don't, you don't really know are happening until you see something that's like, that's not me. Why am I acting like that? You know. So that moment though, in that moment, I still communicated what I was feeling to my team, which is what I tell them I need them to do always. I was like, I don't care if it's ugly. It's something I preach, but I did it. I did that. And for that reason, it didn't spiral into a big problem. It didn't grow. It didn't disturb our, our way of life. That, those ugly moments don't destroy a team. It's because you let that ugly moment or you let that ugly thought fester and things like that. So I spoke to them and we fine, we did it. And we're dealing with, we just dealt with something else in the team. Somebody was dealing with something and I brought that moment up in that, in that, in that meeting. You guys remember when I had the ugly moment? Remember the ugly moment, that's what we call it? And they're like, Rachel wasn't that bad. I'm like, no, that for me is as bad as it's gonna get. Me crying, <laughs> like all that. So, and I said, did anybody leave me in that moment? No, you guys knew I was dealing with something because I told you. So all that matters is we can remain the solid team, we can remain winners if we continue to communicate and thwart up any doubt and do those things that we all preached or I preached to them to do, but still maintain a level of self. So regardless of that moment I had, the next day it's like, all right, I'm still gonna get up in the morning, I'm gonna work my butt off for you guys. It doesn't matter if I was crying, I'm working. Where are you at? I'm at set. Like, you know, like I'm, I'm going to still do all the practices that I do. So I worked really hard despite the pain. I treated people with respect despite the pain. I communicated when I had an ugly moment despite the pain. <laughs> um, I didn't clam up. I didn't do the things that I'm a, a Taurus, like, you know, like we we're stubborn. We kind of, I fought that. I did, wasn't stubborn in the moment. I communicated and, and I treated people with respect when they were treating me bad. Someone was trying to swindle me. I still treated them with respect. I let them know what they did wrong and then I treated them with respect. I didn't demoralize them and spread the nonsense around and tell everybody what they did. Um, so yeah, remaining yourself is so important in good and bad, even more so sometimes in good, because like I said, the hubris that pops up when you're 
wow, it's going good. Let me go ahead and do X, Y, and Z or feel like that's like, wait a minute, that's not you. That's the practice. That's the outcome. So the outcome has nothing to do with the winner. Like if you're a winner, like Serena Williams or whatever, like she just lost uh, the U.S. Open again, like, right? But she won. She, she went out there. She went through what she went through. And she still performed. She still, I mean, second place. I mean, goodness gracious for the woman she's gone through. But she went out. She played. That's who she is. She's a hard worker. She went out. She trained. Yes, this uh, body is not what it used to be because of the pregnancy, but I'm still going to train. I'm still going to work hard. I'm, still, I'm not going to give myself excuses or passes to have bad practices or treat someone bad. And that's what I mean by remain yourself in the good times and in the bad times. And I was able to do that, thank goodness, in a time when it was, it was clutch in sports, what we say, or when it was sublime or when it was paramount. Like It needed to happen where I remained myself for it to work. So don't let everything crumble in who you are, those, those, those identifying factors about yourself. When things get really bad, that's, the, that's why you were yourself. That's why, that's why you built these things in for this moment. So don't let it fall apart. Or don't let the ugliness of people bring ugliness in you or react badly. Remain who you are.